What's going on friends? If you are looking to get more power out of your V-Rod, the good news is there's not a whole lot you need to do to it. On the flip side, the bad news is there's really not a lot that you can do to it anymore these days. When it comes to the V-Rod today, a lot of the aftermarket companies that were producing big bore kits, cams, these are no longer around and the same is true for Harley Davidson. If you really got serious about hopping up a V-Rod, you would basically put destroyer parts on it. Go from the 53mm throttle body to the 58mm throttle body. Maybe put some bigger injectors in it. Maybe a set of the Stage 2 cams. Now the downside of going with the larger throttle bodies, the bigger cams, this stuff really wasn't street oriented. And by doing so, you may find that it took all your power in the low and mid range and put it way up top where you rarely ever saw it. Now, granted, you may get some power gains in the mid-range, but you had to rev the bike up a lot higher to see it. Guys, please don't forget, before we get too far into the video today, if you would, drop a like on the video if you enjoy it, and consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. So, when it comes to a B-Rod motor, leaving the stock cams in, it really is a good idea. And we're going to take a look at the video a little bit later on, Getting in and doing some internal engine work as far as cams go, that can really end up being cost prohibitive when you compare it to the actual power that you gain from just doing the basics. Not just doing the basics, but doing the basics correctly. So guys, if you have an 1130cc V-Rod, these things are an excellent package right out of the box. They're already right at 100 horsepower, and you put a set of slip-ons on them and a good k and air filter in the air box, you're already getting 111 horsepower. This is a pretty good package with just a basically otherwise stock machine. Now, if you guys are riding a 1250 V-Rod, just bone stock right out of the box, these things are putting down 116 horsepower. This is with the stock air box, stock air filter, and the stock mufflers on the bike. So guys, right out of the box, the V-Rod already produces some very respectable horsepower. But we always want more horsepower, and even if that's enough horsepower for you in stock form, you're definitely going to want that nice, sweet V-Rod sound. Now for sure the first thing that you could do with your V-Rod is go ahead and put a set of slip-ons on it. Now, just adding a set of slip-ons without a tune, you keep your stock air filter in there, yeah, you'll get some good sound out of it, but that's really not going to give you any performance gains other than some sound and chances are you're likely going to have some decel popping when you're, de when you're decelerating letting off the throttle you're going to have that pop 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 out the back that can get extremely annoying after a while so I highly recommend going out and getting you a power vision tuner the power vision tuner is going to allow you to really unlock the horsepower that's basically within the bike you just got to get it out by putting some fuel in the bike then I'm going to show you guys some tricks that you could do aside from just your flash tuner and your exhaust system. And trust me, this makes a huge difference on the B-Rods. Now I will caution you with a B-Rod, going from stock to exhaust system, tuner, and an air cleaner, you're not really going to see any big like, wow, seat of the pants gains like you would on a Twin Cam, an Evo, or even a Milwaukee 8. As I mentioned, these bikes are just such a good package right out of the box. There's not a whole lot of power to unlock in there. But when you really put everything together, you can get as much as a 10 horsepower gain out of an exhaust change and a good tune on the bike. Now with a B-Rod, it really doesn't matter what set of slip-ons or what 2 into one exhaust you use. They're all pretty dang close when it comes to these bikes. Which is great for you because you don't really have to compromise between the look you like and versus the power output of the system that you're putting on the bike. Now, one thing you don't want to do, definitely don't, out, don't go out and put a set of drag pipes on it unless you just want it obnoxiously loud and you don't care about your bottom end. You could put some torque cones in there and salvage a little bit of that, but that's really going to cost you some horsepower. Now, here we have a V-Rod that's got a set of slip-ons and a K&N air filter in the stock air box tuned with a DinoJet PowerVision. You look at these numbers here, and then we look at the numbers from the stock bike. Really, zero gain at all. We spent all this money on a set of slip-ons, we did a tune on the bike, we put a K and an air filter in it, and actually it looks like we lost a little bit of horsepower. Now guys, this is where that little trick that I kept mentioning comes into play. V-Rods love air. The more air that you can put into these bikes, the better. Now, we spent all that money, got zero gains. 
Well, here's the trick that you need to do. You need to go topless. Not that kind of topless. I do have younger viewers, but anyhow, lose the top of the airbox. Not the airbox cover on the outside. Remove your cover, go down to your airbox, get rid of that stock airbox top with the snorkel. It hurts absolutely nothing, but as you can see here, with slip-ons, the same setup with slip-ons, a tune, and a Canon air filter, we gained six horsepower over stock by just giving the bike some more air. We went from 116 horsepower to 122. That is pretty impressive for just ditching the top of the stock air box. Because that stock air box is very restrictive. That little snorkel that runs down below the battery up there, that is not nearly enough air to feed those V-Rod engines. Now, if you've got to have a two-into-one on your motorcycle, the same rules apply there. Do the tuner, do the K&N air filter, and get your two-into-one exhaust. Now, let's take a look at the dyno graph. With a two-into-one exhaust system with topless air box, tuner, we're only looking at 126 horsepower. This is only a three horsepower gain over just a set of slip-ons. So at this point, you've really got to decide, is it worth the money to go from slip-ons to a two-into-one? If you like the look and sound of the two-into-one, absolutely go for it. But performance-wise, to me, three horsepower for that extra amount of money, that's pretty negligible. So we're hitting 126 horsepower with the V-Rod. That's with a two-in-the-one exhaust, topless airbox, and a good tuner on it. Now, where I mentioned that getting into the engine can really become cost prohibitive with a V-Rod from the time it takes to buy the parts and then the labor that you're gonna spend getting them put in, even if you're doing it yourself, it's a lot of money for, in my opinion, not a whole lot of gain. So let's take a look at what happens when we put a stage two set of cams in the V-Rod, we put a 58 millimeter throttle body, some bigger injectors, two into one exhaust, topless air box, we tune it all up. What are we getting? Well, after we spend all that money, we're getting 126 horsepower. Yeah, that's only six horsepower over a two into one exhausted V-Rod with a good tune on it and a topless air box. And not only that, looking at the dyno graph, this thing gets pretty wavy and shaky in the mid-range, and that's not really something that you would probably prefer to have happen on the street. That kind of makes for a, a not-so-fun ride. So guys, if you were actually able to find the parts, if you were able to actually find a set of Stage 2 cams, a set of 58 millimeter throttle bodies, you're looking at a thousand bucks right there. That was the retail catalog price when Harley-Davidson offered it. $500 for the cams, $500 for the throttle bodies. And then you're looking at another $300 for a set of injectors to actually go with that entire setup for a six horsepower gain. And that is way up on top. Yeah, it does a little bit for you in the mid-range, but it's really nothing to write home about. And as I mentioned, V-Rods aren't as quick and easy to work on as the push rod V-Twins. So you're looking at a lot more money and time and labor. Is that extra six horsepower worth it to be over 130 with the V-Rod? I'm gonna leave that up to your wallet because my wallet says no when it comes to that. If I'm doing a V-Rod, I'm doing the topless air box, probably just a set of slip-ons and a power vision tuner. Now you could also put a Thunder Max on it, which is absolutely, that's one of the best tuners out there for any fuel injected Harley. Dad took a rock to his radiator and we had a little dent in the oil cooler down there. I was able to get the radiator replaced. That was no problem. That was a afternoon job. But while we were in there doing that radiator on Pops' bike over the summer, this is exactly what we did to it. We tuned it with the Power Vision because it already had a set of slip-ons since he got it used. We had the slip-ons, but the bike obviously didn't have a tuner as it had horrible deceleration pop. But with the tuner, the slip-on exhaust, we ran topless on the airbox and ran out and did a several auto-tune sessions on it. We was able to get that thing pretty close where I was happy with it. He was thrilled with it. So with him being thrilled with it, that's all that really mattered. So guys, when it comes to the V-Rod, if you've been searching around for some aftermarket parts for it to hop it up a little bit, you probably ran into the same thing that Dad and I did. There's not a lot of parts out there, but when you really look at it, it doesn't take much to make these bikes run really strong. Now even, and I showed you that dyno graph, we had the 1130cc bike that had just a filter in the air box and a set of slip-ons and a tune on it. It's 111 horsepower. 
So basically, if you run that with a topless airbox, it's going to put you up there about in the 116 range, right up there with about the 1250 stock. Still, that's plenty of horsepower. So just remember, guys, you can do your slip-ons, do your tune, but if you're not running a topless airbox on these bikes, you're not really gaining anything. The topless airbox makes all the difference on these V-Rods. But anyhow, guys, that's all I've got for you this week. I hope you enjoyed that little venture into the V-Rod again. I had a pretty good response in the comments from last week about some new V-Rod content. I want to throw out there what I've actually found working on my dad's V-Rod. Because you know me, I'm the push rod V-Twin guy. That's mainly what I do. But dad buying a V-Rod, I, I had to learn pretty quick about those and learn how to adjust valves and everything. And valve adjustments, that's a whole nother animal on those bikes. It'll really make you appreciate those hydraulic lifters in your 45 degree V-Twin. Guys, as always, if you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to leave a like on it. That tells the YouTube algorithm you enjoyed what you were seeing, and this helps us get that content recommended to other viewers. But guys, that is it for this week. I hope you had an absolutely wonderful Thanksgiving. I want to thank you all for watching. Please stay safe on the streets, ride smart, dodge the cars, and I'll catch you guys back here in next week's video. Thanks for watching. Mm.